Yeah. You might want to raise it a little. Well, it's really tough. Okay, so finding equations of tangent lines. <coughs> if I have some function, and I want to know the slope of the function at that point right there. What do you do? Find the derivative. Get the derivative. Plug it in. Plug in the, the, the point x value. Point the x value at that point. And that would give me that instantaneous slope, or the slope of the tangent line, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if I just need to go a step further and find equations of the tangent line, do you have enough information to do that? Yeah, probably point slope form would be your best bet. Yep, because you guys just told me how to find the slope, right? Don't we also know a point that that line is passing through? Yeah. It's that coordinate that we use to plug into our derivative to begin with. So if you know the slope and you know a point, you can write the equation of that tangent line in point slope form. So there's really nothing new here. It's just kind of putting a bunch of things together. I'm going to do one of your homework problems for you. It's number 55 on page 115. So we have y equals x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2. So 3x cubed minus 6x. And we want to find the equation of the tangent line at the point 1 comma 0. So this is definitely a point that is located somewhere on that graph. Okay. We haven't looked at the graph yet. We're going to. Okay. So I have your graphing calculators handy here in a minute. Okay. But we're going to do all the calculus work here first. Okay. Before we can write the equation of a tangent line, we need to know the slope of the tangent line. In order to find the slope of the tangent line, the first thing we should do is find the derivative. So in this case, y prime, 4x cubed minus 6x plus 0, so 4x cubed minus 6x. There's your derivative. The slope at the point 1 comma 0 would equal 4 times 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 because I'm plugging in the x value of that coordinate into my derivative to determine the instantaneous rate of change or the instantaneous slope at that point. And what do we get? Negative 2. Negative two. <clears throat> so now I know that my slope, my m is negative 2. The point that I have is 1 comma 0, so there's my slope. There's my point, if you don't recall, y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. If you never use that, you could just write y equals negative 2x plus b, substitute in 1 for x, 0 for y, solve this for b. Some of you probably did it that way. Yeah. Instead of using point slope. I always forget that Makes one. no difference to me which way you prefer. I think this is faster for me, so that's why I use it. Okay, if you don't recall this though, and you want to use y equals mx plus b, go for it. Alright. 
So y minus 0 equals my slope is negative 2, parentheses x minus 1, because I plug in that for x1, that for y1. And you get y equals, that doesn't matter, negative 2x plus 2. Good. Oh, we forgot the y equals. I forget to do that. So this is the equation of the tangent line that hits this curve at that point. If the y value wasn't zero there, then you'd have, have to add or subtract it to the other side to get <coughs> y by itself to write it in slope intercept form. Got it. Okay. I think the textbook is going to write all of the answers in slope intercept form. So that way if you're comparing answers in the back of the book, don't leave your answer in point slope. For the okay. test, do you want to leave it in point slope? Um, it makes more sense to you guys to do slope intercept, so I want to be consistent with that. Let's just change everything to slope intercept. So that means if you use slope intercept from the get go, great. If you use point slope, just change it to slope intercept. Distribute it, get y by itself. Take throw back out for two. Okay, yep. Alright, I want to show you <clears throat> then the second part of that, the instructions on that problem. Part A says find the equation of the tangent line. We did that. Part B and C are on the calculator. So if you would please, on your graphing calculator, enter the original equation y equals x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2. And also enter the equation of the tangent line. And get rid of all other equations. Oops. Maybe zoom in once so you get a little better view. Ask a neighbor if you're struggling or I'll I'm catching up. Compare your graph. Oh, you were just saying. <laughs> this is a regular yeah. Compare your graph with the neighbors. Make yeah. sure yours are looking the same. Yeah. So I entered the original equation. I entered the equation of the tangent line. say to use a graphing utility to graph the function and its tangent line at the point. It's a little bit confusing for me to see right there. I'm going to zoom in once. I'm going to go zoom. Number two. Press enter. Okay. And you can see it a little bit better right there. If you wanted to zoom in further, you can move the little cursor where you want to zoom in and get kind of close to one and again hit zoom number two enter you can zoom in even more right specifically or as close as we can to that coordinate but you can see the curve and then you can see your tangent line Looks like we did a pretty good job of identifying the correct equation of the tangent line at that given point. So this is just for a check. Okay. It is, it is a check. Um, it's basically using a calculator to make sure you didn't goof up when you did your algebra. Sweet. Okay. 
also, okay, it's not a perfect science because of a little bit of the programming behind it. Okay, John? All right. It's not perfectly. Um, I'm going to give you the exact right answer, but I'm going to show you something else, too. Okay. Um, I think I can probably leave the screen as is, but I'm going to go to second trace, which would be calculate. And the sixth one down here, this dy, dx, you probably have seen that notation if you've been reading the book just a little bit or looking at some examples. Basically, that means the derivative. Okay. If you select number six, and then you hit one, because we want to know the derivative at x equals one, it will give us the slope of the tangent line at one. Notice the little bit of a issue with the programming. It's not exactly negative two. Okay, and that has to deal with how basically the language of the calculator is written. Or on mine, it's not quite negative two. Did anybody get negative two? Okay, it's got a decimal. Okay. Uh, but if you were to round that to the nearest tenth or hundredth or thousandth, you'd still get negative two as your rounded <coughs> answer. This would be another way for you to check to make sure you got the correct slope of the tangent line at a given point. You can do that at really any value. Just if I didn't want to see this other, if I didn't want to see the tangent line on there because it's bothering you and you just want to see the original graph, I'm going to hit zoom six to get back out to a standard window. Let's say I wanted to see the slope of the tangent line at, oh, at two, for instance. I could just go calculate number six and then hit x equals 2, press enter, and I'll at least put the cursor right there, but the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 must be 20. Okay. If we wanted to come back to our derivative, if we want to know the slope at x equals 2, 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32, 6 times 2 is 12, 32 minus 12, you also get 20 again. But if the calculator is, I'm basically showing you ways to kind of check your work to make sure you haven't, haven't goofed it up. Okay? So again, the way you would do that is you go second trace, or calculate, and then number six on my calculator, I'm assuming yours as well, dy, dx, that's finding the derivative, or finding the value of the derivative at whatever x value you type into the calculator. Um, and it will give you what the slope of the tangent line is at that moment. Okay. Questions on that? So, do you know how to find the slope of the tangent line? Yes. Do you know how to find the equation for the tangent line? Yes. And would you feel comfortable enough with your calculator to help you verify that your answers are correct? Okay. If you're a yes on those three things, I'd say we've done what we need to today. Okay, I got just those next three problems is all I want you to do for your homework. 56, 57, 58, right there on page 115. Um, then we will uh, have our quiz tomorrow over limits, uh, infinite limits. And that should only take about 20, 20 minutes. So then we'll go a little bit further into derivatives after that. What are the problems on that? Thank you.